Hey, Richard Knudsen here again. And here's an example of something that I still find a little bit tricky, though I've done it a fair amount in Dynamics here in 2011. That has to do with building dynamics, dynamic queries in, in a dialogue process. And the scenario that I'm going to show you here is uh, going to use contracts. And it's a dialogue process that works it's written against the phone call activity type. And the scenario is you've got maybe a customer service rep taking phone calls from the customer. And the customer wants a specific level of service and maybe wants to open a case against a contract or an SLA, but they want a certain level of, level of service that only is available for accounts that have gold level, service level agreements. So you can see in the AdventureWorks sample database, I've got a little bit of data worked up that illustrates that. You can see that Litware has two gold level SLAs, gold level number one, gold level number two, and the Magnificent Store has a couple of gold level SLAs. Portable Equipment has one, Best of Things has one, but there's a lot more accounts in that. So obviously not all of my accounts have gold level SLAs. Now, let me show you how the dialog works. I go to Activities, got a little test phone call record. I mentioned that I run this dialog against the phone call activity type. So the scenario here is fielding phone calls. I don't want to have to take the time to identify whether the context of the database or not. I really just want to identify whether the account that they're representing it with has those gold level service agreements. So I've got this dialog. In a minute, I'll show you what it looks like. But for now, let's run it. Call it case intake. The idea is that I'm possibly creating a case record. But again, it's going to depend upon what kind of service level agreement they have. So here, I'm going to select the account records, but notice that in this query, I present the user, this query, I'll show you how to build this in a minute, I'm only showing four accounts here. So this is what? It looks like it's those four accounts, portable, best of things, litware, and magnificent store, that have gold level service agreements. So what I want this to do, right now it just stops. If I select one of these things and click next, nothing happens. So what I want to do is build a dynamic query on the back end of that first query that takes the input from the first query and does a query to show me these service level agreements that each of those that the selected account has. Make sense? It's a little tricky. Here those processes. And here's my case intake process. I'll open this up. I'm going to deactivate it so you can see what's going on here. So this process, it's a dialogue. As with all dialogue, it's only available for on-demand and automatic. So this will hide the process properties. You can see this here. So here is where my first query is defined. So the first query, remember, this is the one that's going to select just the accounts that have those gold service level agreements. If I look at the set properties, click set properties for this query. This is simply an advanced find. If I wanted to, I could use a save view for this, for that matter. So it's saying the status equals active. So this is querying account. Status equals active. And I'm drilling through contracts. And I'm looking for contracts that have a service level equals gold. And interestingly enough, you can learn a little bit about what we're going to do next by clicking this modify query variables. This is the fetch XML. The dynamic serum creates behind the scenes queries like this. And you can see variable zero. What's this? This is my status. It's just state code equals zero. That's your status equals active. And this is the contract service level type. This is the, 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 uh, the uh, that's the schema name. The uh, display name service level. And this is my gold level contract. So basically this, and interestingly enough, if you look at this, 
somewhere in here you might see. The link entity is defined. Your entity name is account. There's the fields that we're returning. And then here are the filter conditions. So anyway, this is the um, fetch XML that's defined behind the scenes here. But that's just the first step in the chain. Those are the accounts. And notice I give this thing a name, accounts with gold SLAs. And then I create a page, which is the basic UI component in the dialog. Then the selected account, this is going to be a prompt and response. And the key thing here is when I click set properties here, it's going to be a response type of option set. Notice the prompt text is which account are you with? And what I'm going to do here, rather than hardwire values, I'm going to query CRM data and the query variables. This is what was returned from the previous. So this accounts with gold SLAs. This is the result. This is going to be the query that I defined earlier. So I'm going to use that query variable to display that list in the dialog. And I'm going to use both columns and separate them with the two dashes like that. So I'm going to be careful to name my queries, give them kind of good names like this so that I can use them subsequently. So now let's do this. I'm going to go create another query, and this is going to be the dynamic query. That's what's a little tricky about this, because I want to use what was selected here, the selected account. This is going to be input for my next query. So I'll select that page. Now I'm going to create another query. And instead of accounts with gold SLAs, this will be SLAs for selected account. So now I'll go into my query. What do I want to query here? Here, I want to query contracts. So I'm using the contract entity for this. Choose contracts. And what are the conditions I want in this query? Well, I want status of the contract equal to active. We won't be able to do much with this contract if the status is not equal to active. So let's get that out there. That's hardwired. And I want service level to be equal to gold. And then, here's the tricky part, at least in my opinion, just a tricky. Of course, it could just be a slow run, but um, how do you substitute the account name in here? Dynamically. Remember, I want to take input from the previous query and put it in here. Well, if I select it, I can choose customer from the standpoint of the contract. It's the customer that we're interested in. And I can't do equals because if I do equals, this is going to be a lookup. And that looks up. That would be a hardwired value if I went and you know, looked up something like that. We don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to do a begins with and put a little dummy variable in here because I'm going to use query variables to substitute in the name, the value of the name that was selected in that previous query for this. So if you choose this customer begins with and put a little dummy variable in there, then I can click modify query variables. And here's the second time we've seen this now. So here's variable one, the status. Variable two is the contract service level, so it's gold. Variable three is the customer ID, but notice it's customer ID name, and it's a string. So what I want to do here is replace that Acme dummy variable with what? I want the selected account. So here's how I'm going to take the name that was selected in that previous step in the prompt and response. And I want to choose account name here. It's easy to forget this. If you select account, that's the ID for the record. And that's not going to match. We want account name here. That's how we utilize that dummy variable. So if I am very careful and I select account name, now 
I'll be able to go ahead and construct this dynamically. So there's the query. But now remember, I need another page in a prompt and response so I can display that and let the user select it. So now, one more page. I'm going to call this gathered SLA information. And in fact, I'm just going to get one thing about it. Just select the SLA. So now that I've got my page, I can put my next prompt and response down here. And here, I'm going to call this selected SLA because when I come out, that's what's going to be in here. So here I'll just give them a prompt. Which SLA. I can put tip text in there if I want, but I won't. Response type will be an option set. It's going to get its values from CRM data. And this time you'll see we've got two query variables in here because now we're a little bit further down in the workflow and I've got a couple um, things to work with. So if I choose SLAs for selected account, what this will do, if I make sure select that contract name, this will let me select from any of the accounts that have multiple contracts, I'll simply be able to select from the one I want. And now, I can save and close. And if I activate this, back to our little test phone call record, run this, and now we'll have a slightly more experience with this. Because I'm going to get two pages. Each page is going to have a prompt and response. Here's the first one we saw. Let's go to uh, Lipware. Give it two. Now, you can see we've got gold SLA number one for Litware, gold SLA number two for Litware. I could select that and click next, or I can go back just to verify. Let's choose Magnificent. It's the other account that had a couple. Sure enough, do that. So that's how you make one query dynamically depend on input from a previous query in a dialogue in dynamic CRM. Now I'm not doing anything with the results here, but let me show you how that would look. Flush this out a little bit. Put in case intake. And let's deactivate this. Now what you can do is, once you're done gathering the information, I could add steps below here. For example, create a record, or maybe the record that, that I create is a case record, and I attach that case record to the selected account and associate it with that contract, gold level service agreement, and then we can happily resolve cases. The customer gets the service level that they're entitled to. So the key thing there, here's your, probably the main takeaway, so I think was the most important, the most uh, tricky part of this. In that second query, the first one, I build the query, then I use the prompt and response to get them to select the account that they want. Then in the second query, the tricky part was using that dummy variable for the field that you want to substitute in the dynamic value for. And, you know, once you do that, you come in here this modified query variable. So if you're going back, if you click back on the design surface, it's, it's going to tell you, since you modified an XML value, you'll lose your changes if you go back there. So, you know, once you're in this scenario here, and substituting that text value in there, you can't go back out to the design surface. You're really, at this point, um, stuck with using the, uh, the fetch XML. But anyway, so that's how you can create dynamic queries in dynamic CRM 2011 dialogues. And I hope you found that helpful. Richard Knudsen, signing off.